Right, we're going to look at the graphical user interface or GUI that's going to control our face rig now. So before you start your GUI, make sure that you've got all of your morph targets uh, set up and mirrored across. Uh, you'll see I've got all of them here and of course I've laid them out in a nice orderly fashion with all of the ones for the right side of the body down here, all the ones for the middle down the middle and all the ones for the left down here. That's just because it's neater. Uh, and in here I've got my eyes and my teeth all set up. Now this is my main character and you can see now that I've put a morpher on here. Uh, we put that on in the previous VTM so that we could test out some of the morph targets. So you can see that I've added all the morph targets in down here. Each one of those is just one of the morph targets in that sort of tabularized view over there. And obviously I've tested every single one as well to make sure that they all work. Uh, we've tested these before. Uh, and eyes. There we go. And what else we got? Uh, brow middle down. Brow uh, left down. Brow right down. We'll see how they all work together. Uh, zero active channels and brow right up. Uh, Brow middle up, left up. Yeah, it's a worried look. Uh, so you can see everything's set up there. All I need to do now is to set up a graphical user interface which is going to control all of these using Reaction Manager. So if I now unhide my GUI, <coughs> this is what I've got so far. Okay. Now the idea is, is that some of these bits will be frozen, so the bits I've got in dark green here will be bits that you don't manipulate, and they're dark greens that you know they're not, not to be played with, but also I'm going to freeze them when I've finished so that you can't accidentally move them around. And all of the light green areas are areas that I can actually manipulate, um, and if you look at the way I've got them set up, if I just grab one of these, it doesn't matter where I move it, it can only go up and down a certain amount. Now, there's one of these for each pair of morph targets. So if I put them both up together, so for the brow, if you remember, I've got um, up and down on the left, up and down in the middle, up and down on the right. So correspondingly, I've got a switch here, up and down on the right-hand side, up and down in the middle, and up and down on the left. I've also got eyelids. Remember, each eyelid could go up and down. So again, I've got up, and down for that eyelid and up only halfway and down for that eyelid and it matches the, the GUI. Uh, I've got cheek up and down, I've got uh, nose wrinkle and nose widen and narrow and I've got lips, the top lip curled open and then I can move it down to narrow it shut and same for the bottom lip curled open narrowed shut uh, and this one is going to do lips widen lips purse and also corner of the mouth turn up and turn down and same on this side i've got the jaw uh, again i can move it anywhere but it'll only open and close and then this one at the bottom of the jaw here i'm going to use to drive the protrusions of the jaw so that will go forward and normal and then right protrusion left protrusion the ears i've got an up and down left and right on each ear so that will go like so and i've also down here got one to control the pupil dilation so that will go up and down like so and one here which will control whether the eyes are controlled by the GUI or by a look at target and we'll we'll set that one up later now the clever thing about all these is if I select all of the things which can be uh, modified this will be a lot easier when I've frozen the rest of the GUI because uh, I can just draw a window around the whole lot. There we go, so we've got them all selected. If I Alt right click and go transform to zero it puts them all back to their default positions. Now I'm going to show you how to set that up by putting in uh, two more controllers in just for the eyes here. First of all, create a simple circle. Uh, make it lighter green color. 
so that I know it's one of the things I can manipulate, and just align it up uh, to the eyelids like so. Uh, and then I'm just going to copy that across to the other side and align that up to there in the uh, X. So I've now got two controllers in place. Now there's several things that need to happen. First of all, they need to be linked to the main GUI, which is this outer head shape here. So let's just select them both here and link them to that. And the reason they've got to be linked is obviously that if you move the GUI, you want everything to go with it. You don't want the whole thing to fail and fall down. Okay, so the next thing now is to get this uh, reset position uh, thing in. So if I alt right click and go freeze transform, uh, just agree to that. And now I'll have a look, and I'll use my dope sheet because I'm going to go there in a, in a minute anyway. Have a look in my dope sheet, you can see that under position I've got frozen position which stores its actual coordinates where it is. And then I've got a new controller in there called zero position XYZ which are the ones that I will be animating. So that's done for that one. So again, just on that one, alt right click, freeze, transform, uh, yes. So now the third thing I need to do is to limit its movement, because at the moment it can go all over the place like this, which is not very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the X position. So right click, choose assign controller. You can also do this in the motion panel at the top uh, and change it from a Bezier float, which is the default, to a float limit and OK that. And as soon as you OK that, it gives you the uh, upper and lower limits dialog. Now I want an upper limit of one centimetre and a lower limit of, of minus one centimetre to allow it to go across the eye like that. And already I can do Alt, uh, transform to zero and put it back in the middle. I want the vertical motion to be the same, so on here, right click, go assign controller, choose uh, float limit and set it to one and minus one. And now whatever you do with that eyeball it's it's limited in its motion. Okay, it can only move one centimeter either way from its original point. And again alt right click and choose transform to zero to put it back in the middle. Now as an extra bit of safeguarding uh, what I'm also going to do is just go onto the hierarchy panel here. I'll select both items at once. Uh, and I've got uh, locks that I can put in in the X, Y, and Z directions. Well, I don't want to lock the X and Y because I'm actually moving them, but I do want to lock the Z so I can't accidentally move it away from the GUI. Uh, on something like one of these brow controllers, you see I only want it to move in the Y, and you can see I've locked X and Z. Now we've got this one set up. I can apply exactly the same to the other one just by choosing this controller here the zero position XYZ. If I right click on there and go copy, it will copy all of this controller information and incidentally any animation it's got as well. Uh, and I can paste it onto something else. So I choose this eye control and click on it there, right click and choose paste and OK that. And you can see now it's got two limit controllers on there and it will whiz around in the same way. Just need to rename them. So I'm going to call that GUI I right, and this one GUI I left. Okay, so now we're ready to start setting this up to control our actual character here. So I'm going to start off with some of the easier ones. The brow, for example, is only a one-dimensional thing, so the up and down motion of the brow there is going to control two morph targets. The up motion is going to control the brow moving up and the down motion is going to control the brow moving, moving down. So to instigate this I'm going to my uh, reaction manager and try and rearrange everything on the screen so you can see it all and add master. So then I come over here and I choose this transform position in this zero position XYZ and then it's the Y position. And what you have to do is you have to choose this thing here called limited controller. It's a little bit of a pain because it means that that name there doesn't tell you that it's the Y direction, which can get a little bit confusing, uh, but we have to live with that. So that's the master controller and the, basically the up and down direction is gonna control two morph targets on here. So I need two morph target slaves. So click add slave, choose my main character, go to modified object, 
go into the morpher and you can see all of the morph targets are listed here and I want brow right up because it's the right hand brow her right obviously and not mine uh, and then just click on state down there state 01 what it means is it's going to add in all future slaves in the same state uh, otherwise it gets a bit messy just click add slave again choose the mesh modified object morpher and this time we're going to choose brow r down there uh, and those two up now hopefully you'll be able to hear me better now i've just plugged the microphone in so now we're going to set up our states in reaction manager i've got my brow control here go into create mode and then lift this up to the top and then go into my uh, morpher and then I want brow right up to go up to a hundred and you can see that happen in the mesh there click create state now that state will have the values brow right up is a hundred brow right down is zero so now I'm going to put this all the way down I'm going to reset brow right up to zero and I'm going to turn brow right down to 100 and create another state and you can see here that when this is at the bottom basically there's no up and it's 100% down and you can see that reflected in the graph if I turn create mode off now I should just be able to grab this any way I want and use it to manipulate my brow movements on the right side so that's a simple one-dimensional controller. Something like the ear is a two-dimensional controller, where left to right is going to control the ear going backwards and forwards, and up and down is going to control the ear going up and down. So I'm going to add a new master. I'm going to need to do this twice. I'm going to start off with the X position, choose limited controller, and then add slave and choose the mesh, modified object, morpher, and then we choose ear right back, click on state to keep it all tidy and add a slave there modified object morpher uh, ear right forward just do show selected so we just don't get too much stuff up there so now I'm going to create mode again uh, move it in all the way in the X direction choose the morph target here and we're on the ears there down the bottom here ear right back to 100 create state move this all the way that way and turn ear right back to zero and ear right forward now to 100 create a new state okay so exactly the same procedure i've just done with the brow uh, in one direction for the ear and then i'm going to do the next one i'm going to add that ear as a master again but this time i'm going to add the y position and then add slave this one modified object morpher and choose ear right up add a slave again and choose ear right down go into create mode move it all the way up and activate ear right up and create a state and then move this all the way down zero out the up movement and make the down movement 100 percent and create a new state and then turn create mode off and now the up and down movement causes the ear to move up and down now the great thing about this is that the morphs add together so I can now move the ear anyway I want to control how the ear moves and the way it looks so I'll leave you now to set up any you've got we're going to look at the nose lips and jaw in more detail in a minute so don't do them yet right now I've got the brow ears eyes cheeks set up I've been tweaking a little bit as well since I faded to black um, you can see I've modified the user interface and made it slightly tidier. I've fixed a couple of the X forms that have gone wrong. You may have noticed some dodgy looking gizmos uh, earlier, so I've fixed that. Um, I've also uh, just left you with a facial expression there to see the rig in, in situ. That's kind of, I don't know, impassive, slightly disgusted look. Um, so let's just set them back, back to zero. Select by colour and then transform to zero. Okay, so she's back to normal now. Now I want to talk to you about this little switch here. At the moment, the eyes are set up 
to look at a look at target. If I move this around, her eyes follow, which is what you would expect. With this little switch, the idea is that I can switch from looking at the look at target to looking wherever the rig says I should look. So in other words, by positioning these objects here, which has two advantages. One, it means you can do asymmetrical eyeballs like that. Uh, but probably more usefully is if you're doing a close-up on her face uh, and you want her eyes to move around a little bit like this while she's talking, it saves you then going out to a wider viewport to try and find the look-at constraint to move it around uh, and then to zoom back into the face. You can do it all from a close-up on the face. In order to set this up, we need to have a look at how the eye actually works. So the easiest place to see that is in the motion panel. Uh, you can also see it in the dope sheet as well. But you can see here, where the look at constraint has been set up, there's a rotation list, which has got Euler XYZ underneath it. Now, this Euler XYZ is a standard XYZ rotation controller, which means you could animate to that. So what I can do is I can use Reaction Manager to drive the X, Y, and Z rotations, uh, or whichever ones it is that I need. But notice at the moment, look at is the current active controller in the list. So if I double click on Euler and make that one the current active controller on the list, you would fully expect me to be able to manipulate it like so but I can't. And the reason for that is because of this weighting value here. So the look at constraint has a weighting value of 100. If I turn this down to zero and then manipulate that, you can see I can move the eyeball directly. This is exactly what I want to be able to do with my GUI. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this switch to drive this weighting value to effectively turn the look at constraint on and off. So at the moment, the default position is rig. So I'm going to start with a value of zero there. Right, let's go into Reaction Manager, Add Master, choose this eyeball, Transform Position, let's do X first, show selected, uh, add the slave, and just check with the Rotate Gizmo, yes it's the Y axis we want, so add slave, this I, Transform, Rotation, Euler XYZ, Y Rotation, go into Create Mode, and we're just going to move this across as far as it will go that way. We're going to rotate her eyeball like that as far as it will go that way and create a state. And move it back the other way. And rotate the eyeball back the other way here. And create another state. Now one thing you'll see here is that the graph uh, doesn't form a straight line. That's not a disaster, but what it does mean is that your movement will be non-linear. So in other words, as you move this eyeball from left to right, moving from there to the middle is going to move slower than moving to the outside. Okay, which is a little bit odd. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to straighten that graph up. Now, I can't move the one in the middle because that represents the middle position, so that one is correct. If I steepen this one up, like that, to make it straight what you'll find is that that eye moves so far round into the head that it's kind of meaningless. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to make this one a bit shallower until the curve is about straight. That just means it moves linearly, but now uh, it doesn't go all the way to her right in this particular case, but it actually animates a little bit better. So once you've done that on the X, you set that up in the Y as well to change, in this case, the Z rotation, do the same on the other eye, and then you can see, if I do the test here, at the moment the eyeball is over there and it's set to rig. If I now go up to set to target, you can see now it looks back to the target and then looks back to the rig position.